thank you everybody uh, for being here. I'm just going to take my mask off so we can be properly heard. I'm uh, joined by uh, Springfield Police Commissioner Cheryl Clapper and City Solicitor uh, Ed Pakula as uh, we address the uh, Department of Justice uh, report pertaining to the Narcotics Division, Narcotics Bureau here in the uh, city of Springfield. So, first of all, police officers have a very uh, dangerous job. But this report is disturbing and disappointing. No one, no one is above the law, including police officers. Commissioner Clapproot and I are committed to continuing these changes and reforms. We look forward to working with U.S. Attorney Andrew Lelling, who we've had some good conversations with, and his team to implement the recommended changes. I would also like to point out and recognize the fact that the Department of Justice and U.S. Attorney Andrew Welling, in their report, thanked the city of Springfield and the Springfield Police Department for our cooperation and assistance throughout the investigation. And I'm going to close with this before I turn it over to uh, Commissioner Clapper. As further stated, this is in their closing remarks uh, by the Department of Justice. We are encouraged by the Springfield Police Department's cooperation by its initial efforts to address reform. We hope the Springfield Police Department will take advantage of its new leadership and the retention of an outside consulting firm, which we've done with PERF, to resolve the issues we identified within the Narcotics Bureau. We look forward to working collaboratively and cooperatively with the City of Springfield and the Springfield Police Department to develop and implement a sustainable reform, sustainable reform measures to address the violations and deficiencies outlined in this report. And that was their closing remarks. Uh, without further ado, I will bring up the Police Commissioner of the City of Springfield, Cheryl Clapper. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Um, as you know, the Department of Justice um, has been investing the scope of the Narcotics Bureau for the past little over two years. Um, we received their report late yesterday. Um, I have read through the report. I have given it already to the deputies. I have given it to um, Ms. Judy Crowell, who is trying to update my policies and procedures so that she knows their findings. I have already given it to the academy staff so that they can review and go over recommendations for training. And I have already given it to the captain of the internal investigations unit so that he can look at their recommendations as far as the changes um, that we should implement. Some of the changes that are uh, recommended in the report have already been started. Um, they realize and I realize and have admitted to in the past that a lot of the policies and procedures, rules and regulations of the Springfield Police Department are, are outdated and as long as I've been here people have been trying to update them and, and, and gain certification and it's, it's such an arduous, enormous task that uh, we never quite got there and now I think we realize we have to get there. So there is um, two assigned two updating policies and procedures and one is Miss Judy Crowell the other is Sergeant Rich Pelcher and they have made some good movement in that area. We are shooting for certification which means that the policies and procedures of the Springfield Police Department have to meet certain standards for certification. So we have been updating policies as we go. New policies meet these standards. Older policies are, are being worked on as, as soon as they can get to them. The other problem that I think the DOJ recognized and we also recognized was our records management system is such that finding reports is very difficult. The IMC system that the police department currently uses does not allow us to sometimes put together an arrest report with a use of force report, with a prisoner injury report. They're stored in different locations making it very difficult for one person to, to locate all the reports that surround one, one arrest. So 
that's a goal. We're looking at different RMS records management systems, and the one that we purchase uh, will have that ability to attach all those reports to the arrest report or to the incident report so they are easily located and uh, there's no possibility of, of not finding the report you're looking for. Training is, is, is big uh, on the agenda. They recommend the uh, use of force. I'm going to have the academy go over that and make sure that we are up to date on everything. We train our officers. Training is, a, is important to me. It, we do it twice a year. There's an academy training and then you have your in-service training so I want to make sure we're teaching the officers the current updated uh, methods. I will look into the cases cited by this DOJ report. Um, some are still pending, though some I think we're just going to have to wait till uh, adjudication and how they come out in court and, and see what we could have done better and, and where the problems lie. The other thing I think it's going to help us out a lot in regards to the report and I look forward to still continuing conversations with the DOJ and, and seeing um, if my changes that I've made so far are, are what they expect and, and what can I do in the future. Um, but the body-worn camera system that is now out there in, in small numbers and, and soon to be out there on everyone I think will help us in this regards and that new records management system that I am looking forward to will tie in the body-worn camera um, video to the arrest also. So I, I believe all these steps um, I was either working towards already or I, I anticipated working towards them. Um, I appreciate the report being concise and thorough and, and I look forward to working with the mayor and with the department in different uh, divisions to implement the changes recommended. We do have um, a consultant, it's PERF, the Police Executive Research Forum. We have an IIU recommendation from them. Most of their um, recommendations we've put into place, we continue to work on that. And between that and the policy and procedure updates, um, I, think, I think we'll clear some problems that we've had in the past with, with the Narcotics Division. I'd like to turn it over now to the City Solicitor, Ed Pakula. Ed? I, I, yeah, body-worn cameras, I think, they, and I told the mayor this morning, and I, I don't think he realized, I think it was a, uh, maybe a, a pleasant surprise, was that we've been going over the body-worn camera policy, and a lot of departments do not put body-worn cameras on plainclothes officers. And because of this report, and because of my discussions with narcotics officers and narcotics supervisors, I feel it important, especially because of this report, that my narcotics officers and my plainclothes officers will wear body-worn cameras. There will be certain exceptions where they will have to say they're not going to be recording, but especially as a result of this report, I want the plainclothes officers and narcotics officers to wear the body-worn cameras. It will be a transparency. Um, tool for us and it will also, I feel, protect the officers from unwarranted claims. So um, that will be coming out shortly. There's still training parts of the department. We're still training most of the uh, squad officers and the uniformed officers and then we begin with the um, plain clothes. But we have purchased enough cameras. We've purchased 511 cameras. So we should be able to accomplish that and have plain clothes officers also don the cameras. Thanks, Mayor. Attorney Pakula. Thank you, Commissioner. I, uh, I think that uh, the Commissioner has <clears throat> rightfully discussed some of the measures um, that are currently being undertaken and uh, the report um, includes uh, a number of measures which uh, we will be adopting. But um, overall, I think nobody wants to have DOJ come in and make the kind of findings that they've made, but everyone wants to have a better police department. And that's what we're committing to here today, to move forward with the DOJ, work in cooperation with them. The law department will be uh, working to put together an agreement uh, that's enforceable. We'll put together all of the terms, and it won't just be limited to the, the scope uh, that's in the report here. We'll, 
we'll work to hammer something out uh, that we can all be proud of and that we can all, buy, all be live by and, and we'll all be better off for it. So um, we're looking forward to the continued work with the DOJ and, um, and uh, I think that the first step uh, in any reform is recognizing the problem and this report lays it out for us. The next step is moving forward uh, to bring in some sustained reforms that uh, can make us all better. Thank you. We'll take uh, any questions that uh, you might have. Obviously, we're all the recommendations we're moving forward on. Some Commissioner Clapper has already moved forward on, and I thought that was a, a great leadership on her part uh, that she is uh, ordering the Narcotics Bureau, Narcotics Unit, uh, that they will wear body-worn uh, cameras. I think that is a, 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 a huge statement. Uh, yes, Steph? Um, can you say more about the agreement that's enforceable? Is this something, are we averting a consent decree here? Eddie can explain that, Steph. Um, this, this isn't the first time the city's been involved with DOJ investigations. Uh, we, and um, in, in the past, we've, we've had them on various issues. Um, voting comes to mind. You recall that when we had a, a lawsuit, an injunction. Um, federal monitors had been put in place. Uh, but we worked with DOJ on that, and we came to agreements, and we instituted reforms, and we're better off for them. And this has some similarities. I don't know uh, how ultimately um, uh, the agreement will look like, but um, but we've 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 done in various ways, whether it be through a lawsuit or whether it be through uh, an agreement. Um, we'll, we we are committed to working together and negotiating something that um, everyone uh, wants to get behind. But so does this take consent to create off? No, I, I think any remedies are on the table. Um, what the ultimate goal is, is to have an agreement that we all are behind. Um, at, as, you know, there has been no lawsuit filed. Hopefully we can avert that. Uh, but, um, you know, what the ultimate uh, end agreement looks like uh, will be a, a subject of negotiation. I'd have to say, Steph, that uh, U.S. Attorney uh, Welling, Andrew Welling, in our conversations, uh, again, he puts it right in his report, uh, was uh, very appreciative uh, of our cooperation and that uh, he feels that a roadmap that we're working together here for the betterment of our police department. So uh, that's the way that we're looking to move forward. So. Uh, nothing, uh, I think it's even mentioned there, of legal stat. These are recommended. We are going to do this. Some things Commissioner Clapwood has already moved upon, and some of the issues mentioned in there, well, we've already moved upon them too, and be updated. But that was our feeling that this was, you know, uh, I think we gave them 114,000 documents, and, they, and I quoted what were the closing statements there of what uh, U.S. Attorney Lelling. DOJ stated they wrote those statements on it. So uh, we're looking to move forward in a uh, positive fashion and continue to address these uh, recommendations, deficiencies to move the department forward. Uh, so that's, that's the message uh, I was taking away from my U.S. Attorney Lowen. Um, the report outlined some deficiencies in the community police board uh, sure. uh, members' training. Yep. Uh, what's going to be done to change that and fortify that? Some changes have already been made, and again, I have uh, attorney, my chief diversity officer, inclusion officer, attorney Talia G, who has taken the lead on that. So we've already made some changes prior to this uh, being made. And Solicitor Pakula, who works very closely with them, can speak to attorney Alicia Days also. So we've already moved proactively. The last thing also, and this was our consultant, uh, PERF, uh, the police uh, executive uh, reform. Uh, research, research reform had indicated uh, 
what we're doing and correct. We need to strengthen it. I want to continue to strengthen it. And again, I put before the city council, I think the second or third time, the subpoena powers. And if the city council can grant that, I have a codified ordinance there that gives the subpoena powers of the community police uh, hearing board. So we've already moved on that. Attorney Talia G is uh, working on the internal changes that have already been made and, and you know, the training and uh, investigative type activities, the information. I'd love to get that subpoena power because then the board can bring uh, anyone and everyone before that board and get all the information uh, that they need. The city council can grant that. I'm hopeful uh, that they will grant that. Any other questions or comments? For Commissioner Clapford, I know there's a lot of changes and you know, you know you briefly spoke about them. I guess can you just kind of clarify you know, what has been changed and what you're still working on in the future? Yeah, sure. Mike. Well, one of the first things we did was I put a captain over an IIU and we, we made sure that we meet actually more than once a week to go over all the cases. Um, we instituted a training for all the supervisors who get the, there's different levels of investigations. One would be an SO to the IIU, which is pretty thorough investigation, and lesser than that is what they call a PI or preliminary investigation. And I think DOJ pointed out that uh, some of my supervisors were doing the PIs in different ways. There should be standardized training, so we assigned one of the IIU detectives to that and she put together a good training so that we're all on the same page in regards to those those pies and how, and how they're looked into. Um, uh, then the, the body-worn cameras, the, every time I've talked to DOJ and, and Attorney Papula and I have had conference calls with them um, in between while this report is being worked on and they were, they were impressed with the body-worn camera um, program and, and the policies and the work we're doing to hold people accountable. Um, they knew we were looking at a new RMS system. They knew that I had hired um, someone to look at our policies and procedures to update them. They knew I was looking at certification. They knew that the police department had some old and outdated rules and regulations and policies and procedures and I, that was an emphasis so that we can gain certification. We would go for accreditation, but the building wouldn't pass. But we can certainly strive for certification. Eddie, did you have any more in the community police hearing board? I know Brian Corr, who heads the National Community Police Hearing Board, he's out of Cambridge, has always commended us for what we're doing in it and we'd be one of the first to be able to subpoena powers and, uh, uh, which would be key if the council would uh, do that. But many of the things that were in the report uh, are being addressed. Some have already been addressed. This report was addressed, uh, post and been addressed on some side issues that they brought up that we had addressed uh, priorly on it. So we look forward to uh, continuing to cooperate and, and work very closely with uh, U.S. Attorney Lelling and DOJ. We actually had a good relationship, and we want the, the best uh, police department in the country. We want the best for our residents and business community. And as I told Commissioner Clapper when I appointed her to, to, to uh, uh, say what she has to say and do what uh, she has to do, and, and she has uh, done that, but there's more to do. So uh, we want to make sure that we're following through with it, and uh, we'll move forward. I know the pandemic kind of delayed some of the court actions, but I was wondering, is there any update in the big dick case and big dick charges? All I know, yeah. The only thing I, I've been told about the big dick case is uh, they had a date in de December. So now there's a current date for big then in December. I'm not sure where the other cases stand. They were supposed to go, uh, Nathan Bills was supposed to be heard March 30th. And that's probably this fall sometime, maybe late fall, if not next year. Commissioner, will this result, so two-part question, do you think the characterization of the narcotics unit as just kind of marauding excessive force is, is fair, number one, and number two, will this report result in any I think the discipline that the report may result in are cases that are already pending. I think the report cites cases that 
discipline is already awaiting, so we have to see how those cases come out, Steph. Um, it's probably too late to go back with some of those other cases they cited due to contractual issues. Um, as far as it being fair, it's, it's nothing I saw, but I wasn't assigned in the unit and I wasn't uh, over there in charge of the unit. I, I see what they cite as, as their basis of fact. There, there's not a lot of cases. It's a small number and then it's a small number of percentage they, they cite. I'm, I'm not, I, I guess I'm surprised that the citing of the excessive force is, is fists and takedowns. There's, there's no weapons mentioned. There's no use of, uh, you know, lethal or non-lethal weapons for the uh, excessive force. So, but we'll, we'll deal with that. No, the police department probably never has had um, a policy regarding if you put your hands on someone, it's excessive force, we should be reporting it. You know, we got to look at that. And if, if that's the way that law enforcement's going and that's the standards they want us to meet, then that's the change we'll make. Anything else? Just a quick question about the body cameras. I think you mentioned the number that you're looking to get to. Could you um, just give us an update? How many body cameras does the department have now, and I guess what is the goal? We, we purchased 511 cameras, Mike, and the goal would be for all squad officers and uh, traffic and uh, plainclothes detective and narcotics to wear them uh, whenever they go out. The extra cameras, if someone's working in extra detail and there's a camera available and they want to take one, they should be able to. Uh, they're not allowed in, in the Springfield Public Schools, so the school unit will not be wearing them. Um, so the policy and, and the way the program stands right now is, is most officers who come in contact with the public will be wearing a body-worn camera. Thank you, everybody. I know we can put this together quickly, and I know you're patient and waiting for it, so we really thank you for getting out the information. Uh, my communications director, Bill Baker, uh, you should already have it. There's a written version uh, of uh, uh, what some will sit here and even some more in depth uh, as we move uh, forward. So each and every one of you stay healthy, and uh, we appreciate uh, the media being here. It's important to get uh, uh, all the information out there, uh, whether good, bad, or challenging because our goal is to continue to move the, not only the city forward, but our Springfield Police Department uh, uh, forward. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Commissioner. Sure, thanks, Thanks, Mayor. Thanks everybody. Thank you.